The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman. Good to be back after doing my uh, webinar yesterday, all day webinar, just over five hours. And uh, we covered a whole bunch of things that were so important, uh, especially, and this it was archived. And what I'd done was, because it was it was promulgated as a Chapman Wave methodology webinar and not a trading webinar per se, even though we put we, we, we had positions that I I said from here it should go there, et cetera, et cetera. We were doing that live just as I'm doing right now, showing you that in the Chapman Wave methodology, you're always looking for at least a peak D, you can go to an E and F, but here it is, the one minute chart went to a D. And then it pulled back just momentarily after 10 o'clock, it went to an E. This is a two-minute chart at E. The uh, five-minute chart recycled, and it is uh, in a leg C at this particular point, uh, having made that uh, rectangle formation with an arc, retested the left side low, and then ran up. And the 10-minute uh, chart, this is the E-mini chart, has gone to a leg E. So uh, and a couple of things that I needed to go through right away at the beginning of the show is to say that I had a Chapman Wave Trin Gauge reading yesterday, a very low reading, and that normally suggests that there will be a Dow pullback to negative, even if the futures are up huge. But with the move yesterday in Disney, D-I-S, there we go, Disney, trading, gapping up huge, it's up at 121, up 8 in leg E, getting closer to the 126, 200-period uh, exponential moving average for the first time in months and months and months. Um, this is, that helped the Dow, and any pullback was ameliorated by that kind of strength. However, most importantly, is that this indicator, out of the last 12 times that it's flashed, has missed only once, and that was the last the last time it flashed. So it's obviously I, at this point I, we've seen it. The Dow of three hundred something points pulling back to just about like a plus forty, and then running again intraday. But that doesn't count as success. It has to go negative, even if it's by one dollar. That's the whole thing about this particular index. So let me just go through these right now. Um, at there we go. So there are a couple of things that I need to talk about right away. Uh, my charts are not showing. Uh, uh, wait, are you sure? Because I can see my chart. Oh, I, I did see the chart. Let me just check. Uh, yep, I've got my, my charts are showing. Okay, so within that uh, context, Paul, you just have to uh, refresh or something like that. What we In the Chapman Wing methodology, there's a technique that I talk about, which is called the Chapman Wave Instant Restart. And what does that mean? SPX .X. It means that within the context of going up to, here we go, there it goes. In the context of a, a buy mode accelerating higher, when the price gets to the fourth highest peak, alphabetized A, B, C, D, E, F, G, never an H, when it gets to a D, if within three bars, there's a break to a new high, a recovery high that is over that D. I always put a little circle there, a yellow circle. And what that, that denotes is that there's a chance that you've got a Chapman Wave instant restart. And the restart suggests that you have an alternate count all the way up from there. It could fail, of course, but you count E and you put E slash A. Your, your thinking here is everything's very positive, but I need to be aware that there could be um, uh, either a sudden pullback or an acceleration, and you don't know. Especially when you're dealing with the 200-period moving average in the S&P at 4187, and it just pops over it yesterday. Very good candle, but a gap up, and gaps often get filled. This will be the second gap if it doesn't get filled. So I always do this. I go E. And for a long time now, I've said to subscribers, just continue the alphabet, but know that you've got an alternate count. But when you get to G, you put a G slash C, 
And very often, if you get to the G C and the technicals are so strong, you might get a pullback and then a little pop to D and then it pulls back. So what are we talking about here? The S&P has a potential chapter wave instant restart. The Dow does not because it took longer to get to that uh, leg E <clears throat> than three bars. But the principle might be the same, that this doji candle was a pullback. The red candle of uh, last week, I think it was Friday, uh, on the 2nd of August uh, to 32,387. <clears throat> started another move, and that could be gray A because it's under the previous peak D. And then you go to E slash B, F slash C. And there's nothing to do because you're just following the price movement. What we spent a lot of time on yesterday is how do these Chapman Wave inside track repellent zones become propellant zones? How do channels, beautiful channels, I mean, I've spent my entire market life as a technician and working on channels and how you come back to the channel, how you can use time on the right side and pull back to a, a key support level and then start rallying. This is the first time we've been intra-week. Now it's too late to say intra-week because intra-week on the 22nd, the week of the 22nd of April, the Dow popped to 35,492, um, 35, but then closed with an inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle to the downside. <clears throat> so this is different because already for two weeks we've closed above this Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. This is the third week. So unless between now and Friday's close at 4 o'clock we drop, oh, I'd say we'd have to drop to the 32,100 level or lower. That's 500 points from here. I'm not sure with all the news that's gone on if there's now more news that's going to come out that can do that kind of damage. Um, but it's, this, is, this is really important. Look, the MACD in the weekly chart is strong. The stochastic is improving at 60%. It's not great. On balance volume is warning me that we're not quite done yet because it's really flat. It's not, it's not doing well. And that's most basically the volume uh, aspect of it for me. The 9 period moving average is within a whisker of crossing positive for the first time since it turned negative. And that was right back there. Uh, back on the fourth, the week of the 4th of, G of February, when it was up at 35,800. It was the first time that there's a chance. And that's another reason, because yesterday in the webinar, as we were closing out, I did the review and I said, one of the reasons, and I had an, an email during my, my show from uh, um, one of our tigers, to say, um, hey, um, you were correcting and wanting to be long ever since we went to that low, um, and considering that we've now rallied so sharply, uh, what, would, what would be the next step in looking at this as positive? So as I was wrapping up my show, this is the first time that I can say <clears throat> in a very long time <clears throat> that the weekly charts are suggesting that the low that was made at 29,653 on the, the week of the 17th of June <clears throat> is a pretty significant uh, low for the first time I can say that in the weekly chart. Not only that, we've got the Chapman Wave falling axe formation. We're up, bumping up against resistance for the first time. Uh, I'm looking at a leg A that's starting to improve in the monthly chart, gray leg A. So it's a lot to talk about. I just need to kind of review and to show you how important the 200 period exponential moving average has been. And we're above it. And will it become the factor? the market back to the 33,000 level. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network at CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, right, folks, we're back. And since the market's running strong, the Dow's at 322, S&P's at 45. After yesterday's big move to have this is extremely positive. One of the reasons we've had no intention of of, of going short, I did expect that there could be some choppiness. We didn't know that yesterday would be two, two really positive aspects to the to the um, economic news, um, and not complaining. We're we're along and we're positive. So what we are looking at is I, I'm just going to do this. I got a question about natural gas. Uh, I'll do that right now because it's a pattern that really is important in my work. When you make a V-shape, you can see in natural gas is the continuous contract from that PG that was made. There's no other way I could count that. Uh, that was back in, I think it was, say, say, it was May. Then we pull back sharply and now we've run up, but we haven't taken out that left side high. This V-shape pattern, we used to call uh, Groucho Marx pattern, Groucho Marx eyebrows, but nobody even remembers who Groucho Marx is anymore. Actually, was, they were not, not my favorite comedians at all. Um, however, um, this pattern normally accelerates back to the high when it's that sharp down and then that sharp up. It usually comes back and it went to a peak G at 9.604. Back in the week of the 10th of June, and plummets to the just uh, just over five. I mean that's huge. And then it springs back all the way to the nine, almost 950, and now it's come back and it's making this cup formation. Now one of the things about the cup formation is number one, you need technical tools to help you. You can just uh, look at it and say, oh look, beautiful cup formation. This is a new gray leg A. Why is it gray? Because it's I have the MACD still. Uh, it's a little bit weak, and the stochastic is very weak at 28. The price is acting well, but it's only the start of a potential move to the upside. Therefore, we call it a gray A. You have a C on the left side, so that means there should still be a D to come. But what we're looking at here is. You need to see the cup formation continue with the MACD turning positive. The nine period moving average is over the 14. That's fantastic. We were looking at that yesterday when we were doing the E-mini uh, in, in the futures. And believe me, when you talk about a rectangle, a narrow rectangle formation, after the huge move to the upside yesterday, we were just watching. I drew in the pattern with a rectangle and a beautiful little bowl formation. It's like a, like a, a soft, a stretched out U. 
and um, and it's exactly what it did. And then it retested the high, and then it pulled back, and then it had the Fed meet uh, the the um, two o'clock meeting, or at least the announcement. And then it went up again, and then it made another long narrow rectangle formation. So those things can be pretty powerful. Now what we're looking at is. In the let me open this up, and that's what I've decided to do. People said to me, um, and I did that yesterday. I was showing the charts in the bigger time frame. So if you're looking at this V-shaped pattern, V-shaped patterns, you've got to measure on the right what happened on the left. So look here on the round about the uh, this is a daily chart, round about the seventh or eighth of June, pops to that high, then it pulls back and goes all the way down to this beautiful. Uh, this is a Chapman wave. This is called the silent doji reversal. In other words, the price goes to a low, but the next candle, the d candle before, it turns out, and the candle afterwards, a tiny doji candles, and then the price just rockets to the upside. And that's an, and look, the tiny doji candle the day before the PD high uh, back in June. Uh, it's a technique I discovered a long time ago. One of the things is people scan for doji candles, um, usually at p potential turning points. And you would have missed this because the turning point was slightly higher. And you would have missed this because this, the turning point was slightly lower. And that's the reason why I thought of it. That's why I call it the silent doji candle. Um, so look what we're doing. We're going to a peak C. It, it, it did a left side, right side time price match in a shorter time frame from the low that was made. This is the plumb line. Can I do that? Is that a plumb line? Yes, call it a plumb line. Right there. Right there. And now what we're doing is we're trying to make the cup formation. Well, the 9 is over the 14. And that's a big deal because, look, every time it turned around when it was making the cup formation back in um, April, it made a peak A, then a pull back to the 14-period moving average, and then it went above it. And that's exactly what you want to see. So this is a good start. There's your leg A. Um, if I did the Chapman wave falling X formation, we did that pattern a number of times yesterday. Look at this. Price comes down, then it makes an expanding cone formation, breaks out, and it goes more to one, one to one to the upside from the breakout level. That's a good sign. But I need to see more. I need to see the MACD cross positive and definitely the stochastic at 28. That's not great. Look what happened here. When the uh, price was coming down, and uh, you had the stochastic at about uh, stochastic was at about yeah, 44. So there's a big difference. So this has got a lot of work. When it, I'm talking about that that April low and turning into May. Okay, so it's a good start. So the question is, if you are long, now it's for the price to prove itself because the technicals. Two of the technicals are pretty good. The third one, actually two out of the four technicals are good. The on-balance volume, so the MACD is just a little bit negative here. My flat and negative, I would prefer if it was positive. The on-balance volume is holding very well. The stochastic is very weak at 28%, and the 9 is nicely over the 14. Relative strength is, this is the gray line there in the daily chart, is starting to improve. So, yes, natural gas, and I talk about that because um, we have a stock in the natural gas area. This is um, New Fortress Energy, Inc., A shares, Natural Gas Fuel Solutions, and it's gone to a leg C with the left side, right side price time match and the plumb line. It's gone right through everything, and it's gone above the 52.37 high of the, se the 7th of uh, June, and that's just saying that within that area, there are some strengths. And it's really important that the, uh, the new, this energy company is moving higher because that's just telling you that it believes, the price of the, of the stock is believing that natural gas is going to move higher as well. That's the way it's looking right now. So um, within that context, I'm going to say to you, if you're looking at boil, now this is aggressive. Yeah, you have to have some... <laughs> I'm afraid you have to have something a little different. It made a peak D top back in June. Uh, I didn't put the down arrow, down arrow. And now it's an up arrow because this is definitely a buy mode. And that buy mode is gone in the boil. This is, boil is called the uh, ProShares Ultra Bloomberg Natural Gas. So this is A, B, C, 
made a D and it pulled back. Remember, I think natural gas had made a C. This made a D, pulls back, and now this is a gray A. It's the same story, but because it's more aggressive, I'm going to say I would I would probably lighten up a little bit some of the position at 87.73 right now. If it if it even touches 82.50. I would take something off because uh, that's going to be important if it starts to go under that, that 90A will start to weaken. So it's good. What you really want to see is you, you can't give it just two days. You need another three days. In other words, going into Monday, I want to see it close nicely above 90.59 is the high of the 3rd of August. I want to see it at least in the 90.70. That'll say to me, great, you're on your way. I'll be back. We've got a lot to cover, and we just did oil, uh, natural gas. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, I was just drawing in here the E-mini uh, one-minute chart. That was a peak G that was made. Have a target if it starts to pull back. Key support's going to be uh, at the 42 uh, 44 level. It's at 42.51 right now. We'll follow this. Uh, it made a peak. D, uh, e, I think it was in the 10-minute chart. Um, the, the strength. So what we're looking at here, uh, let me just do this. So you can see a beautiful cup formation breaks out, goes to D and then an E in the 10-minute chart. One of the things I'm looking at is when there is this kind of buying and it is the, the, the power of the move to the upside yesterday, it was not that it moved up, it was the power of the move. It says to me that some of the stocks now are overbought and that there's a rotation going on. Let me just get out of this. Uh, I need to look at the price of the market itself. Um, and that there needs to be 
some kind of uh, a rotation to be able to hold some of the stocks that have moved up and now perhaps are getting a little extended. But I'm beginning to see, for instance, Disney, and this is what I spoke about yesterday in my, in my webinar. I say the rotation has been so important throughout this market so that when it becomes overbought, what happens is the sectors that have been just screaming to the upside, whether it was oil, whether it was natural gas, whether it was uh, uh, the home builds, whatever it is over the sectors during the year, when they get overbought or oversold, when they stall to take a breather either way, what happens is some other stocks pick up the slack. So look, here's Disney. It's been a dismal. Disney stands for dismal or did stand for dismal. Now I think it's turned the corner with a doji candle in the weekly at the low that was made at 70, I should have typed that in, right? At 90.23 a month ago, 90.23. And here we are at 121. That's 30 points. That's a 60% that's a gain. That's a fantastic gain. That's what happens off lows. You get huge gains. But now what I'm looking at is there's a chance that we're looking at a rotation that says, okay, in this particular time frame, we could start to see a pullback in some of the stocks that were doing really well and that now need a bit of a breather. But in order to maintain the integrity of the indices so they don't all co collapse with what I used to call a Granville 97% 90, all stops uh, are hit, everything goes down. We haven't. We don't. We've only seen since 2011. We've only seen about two or three times that that's happened. Most of the time, it's been rotational corrections. So, if this is a rotational correction on the way up, you can see a Disney. You can see a Shopify. In fact, it was one of those we spent a little time on yesterday. And even today, I said this is a stock that uh, is appealing to me very much. We've been wanting it. I was a little too busy yesterday. It was a pity because yesterday was a perfect time to enter it. And uh, look at that. How long can a rectangle formation last? This was an example yesterday. Well, it can last uh, from May the 5th, 2022 at 42.49 and May the 12th at 30.81, basically in that same trading range. So that was May, the, what did I say, 5th? Let's call it all of May, June, July, and now it's part of August. So for three and a half months, how many days is that? Three and a half months, it's finally made a leg D. Now, I have a rule about that, but it's usually a rule when the rectangle formation, narrow rectangle formation, is at the top. IWM. Let's look at the IWM. Let's go back to right here. When it is at the top, what happens is you go to a peak D, not you. The price goes to a peak D of a long rectangle. If it then pulls back and takes out halfway of the um, support level of the rectangle, it can go all the way down to the low part of the, the horizontal base and then take it out and then plummet. Well, this is something very different. This is something that's working its way from the opposite side. An inversion. So that says that little dip. I didn't put the notation. I should have done that. I just I was so busy with the chart that I forgot. Uh, there it is. At trough G, went back uh, in in uh, trough G. We're talking about. We talk, I, I've not done that. I should. Have, I can just do it from here. So there's trough A. Remember on the way down, they call troughs. Trough B, trough C, trough D, and then it kind of messes around. Finally goes to an E. And then it goes to an F. And I believe that that 29, yep, that low on the 6th, I think it was the 6th of July, 5th of July, on the 5th of July is the equivalent to the upside down rectangle. So now you've gone to a leg D and that makes the whole area, 44, right, 0.29 right now, that makes this whole area in Shopify of 30, uh, of 40.50 to 39.30, kind of the halfway marker there, as major support. 
it's now changed its character. It's now moving from, you see this plumb line that I, I showed my subscribers this morning, right there, in a shorter time frame, it's broken to the right side to a high. So that says it doesn't look like a cup formation, and therefore, when I put this in, you have to use a little imagination. But in fact, what's happening is there's a chance that we are forming essentially a platform springboard from which a Shopify can move. If that's the case, we're looking at, and that's why ARK is up. I think ARK has Shopify. ARK is up to at 53.66. We, we've been a little conservative. We haven't got back into ARKK. I missed my opportunity three days ago. That was a great opportunity. It didn't feel like it, but that would have been a good opportunity. But the reality is that with the GQQQ, which we have uh, two positions, uh, and we're trading those positions, that's the Q three times along the Qs, um, we, we're participating in shops move up somehow or other. But... Uh, ARC is up 4% and the QQQ is, uh, TQQQ is up just over 3%. So yeah, wonderful uh, intraday move, but it's young. So that's what I'm saying. And that's the reason why I've been so, um, I've been so determined that we stay in our long positions, although we could trade them. For instance, uh, um, we, we are not long the SMH. I would have preferred that we had a position in the SMH more conservative. We are along the aggressive SOXL, three times long. I'm not happy about that. I mean, I'm very happy because the gains are huge. But I'm not happy about it because on a pullback, as we saw the other day, look at this, XOL. Look how deep it pulled back. Fortunately, the entry price of 17, where we've taken lots of all the way up to the 22 area, we've taken a little bit off. I kept that big core position because I lowered the stop below our entry point because I said, I know these wiggles, these wiggles are really important. I want to be in it. I prefer the SOX, just the SMHs. Don't, I mean, the percent, look at this. It's up $1.46. It's up 7.3%. The SMH is up 2.29%. So it's, it's a little more handleable as a core position than having an aggressive but we kind of stuck with it. I did miss an opportunity the other day. But 245.74 was the peak C high. Look at the resistance in the 200 period moving average. It needs to get to 245.75 for a leg D. And then we'll see what happens. But look what's happened with the weekly chart of the semiconductor index. It's broken out for the third peak. Well, we've got to wait for Friday's close. I'll be back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So we're looking at the E-mini here, just real quickly, the one minute chart. And we've got ourselves, uh, let's make that green. We've got ourselves a, look at the look at the peak G that was made right here at 1020 at the high of 4260.50. Look at the retracement where the MACD had turned down. The stochastic couldn't hold above 80%. And the nine period moving average has turned pink. So my target here would be, if this continues lower, would be a big test of the 200 period exponential moving average of 4240. I said today, I, uh, earlier in the den, mentioned that um, I'm thinking that the 4223, I think it is, I said level intraday is going to be really important for the E-mini at least this morning. So we'll see what happens. But absolutely, the buying has just been intense. But I think in the short term, because of the way I'm looking at the rotation, I think that the short term says, be a little careful here. Any new buying has to be fresh stocks that have really been beaten down, but buying stocks that are already have been making new highs over the last two days, that's a little bit risky uh, it, unless you have a position and you're adding to it and you have a decent stop in place. All right, let's get back to our story. So a question came in uh, in the den. Could I look at H? OOD, Robin Hood. This is one that for a long time I've been saying at some point we want to buy Robin Hood because it's going to be part of this whole mega bull market that could take place if every bit of bad, if this market continues to walk a wall of worry. It's just going to force people into the market. And that's why I think I'm looking at so many single digit stocks. I had a list of about eight or nine. I didn't choose anything for today because there are other things that we wanted to do. But uh, the list is a long list of these are low price. These are single digit stocks that are showing up uh, on a screen that I have. So within that context, uh, Hood is trading at 11.07. I wanted to get it and I really, I had it in my mind that in the, in the sevens or preferably sixes, I would go in. But we were so busy with other things uh, trying to get good positions uh, in three time long and all, all sorts of things like that. I just had to let it go. Well, going from the sixes to the elevens, that's almost a double. That's really fantastic. But it was once a time up in the 80s. Was this the round number high? I can't remember. Hood had a round number 85 high. Yep, I do remember. 85, I remember round numbers. I don't remember names of people, <laughs> but I do remember round numbers. Um, high, all-time high, in fact. And then it plunges down to the sixes, and now it's at 11. I think it's telling us that there is a potential. It's still a rectangle formation, but there is a potential. See, I can make an aggressive cup formation here. I don't like to do that. I like to be as conservative as possible and then pleasantly surprised at the alternative that I decided to ignore just for the moment. And that says, look, it's more a bold formation like that rather than a serious cup formation. So I like it. I don't know what the news is going to be unless it's internal to really take it down to the 840 level. 
Um, but I do say that it's going to, it's probably going to go to a leg D in the next day or two above 11.35. Today's high is 11.30. Uh, it's made a peak C. It should go to a leg D. And then I think we have to assess because this the series of highs that were made at about seven, at about 9.72 back on the 27th of June at about 9.60 something a little later than that I, in July, I think that that could very well turn into a base of support. So do do I like it on a fundamental? I have no clue about the fundamentals. Do I like it on a technical level? Arg, going from 85 round number to what it was the exact low, going to the exact doji, little tiny doji candle gap down low, and then reverse it up at 681. <laughs> 681, and that was what? That was July. Yeah, that's very interesting. So that was July, June the 17th. Oh, my. 6.81, June the 17th. 6.80. What will take it back to the 7s? I don't know. Uh, now I've already forgotten. I shouldn't have been speaking at the same time. 7.16, I think it said. It doesn't matter. In, in July. Okay. Um, so what we're looking at here is just the sense of a turn to the upside. So the question was only could I show the chart. My answer is... This is one that I wanted as part of our portfolio, as part of our brokerage house uh, in the mix of financials, brokerage, uh, high tech, um, oil or gas. I chose gas, natural gas. Uh, we still have the DB agricultural fund. Uh, you know, we have a, we have a mix, and within that context. Uh, all I can say is uh, I, we have an environmentally friendly stock. CF is a symbol. CF Industries pulling back a tad today. It's up 70 at 103.01. Made a peak D high yesterday at 105.23. Let me just check to see if that is the number. 105.23. Uh, now I could do some digesting. Did a beautiful the cup formation that I've talked about, spoken about so often. Spent a lot of time yesterday on it because it's the pattern that we're looking at. Uh, for subscribers to my opening call, I'll do a webinar on Saturday. And it's going to cover, um, I'm going to cover what I'm looking at both rotationally and in terms of sector and individual stocks and sectors. I'm going to choose some just to discuss that I think would be very important, plus the pattern, because after the cup formation, it's not unlikely that you could start an arch formation. And where would that stop? Would it be a full arch? I don't think so. So this is CF. Uh, it holdings, hydrogen, nitrogen products, clean energy, fertilizer, emissions abatement. Wow, what doesn't sound good there, right? But it's the price that counts. It didn't do as much as it should have if it's such great news. It should have been not only above the left side high of June of uh, 101.71. It should be testing that breakout peak A failure pattern that was in uh, 16th of May at 110.36. So it's a little under that. It's acting well, but it's, it is doing it with small candles. No problem. I don't have a problem with that. But the big candles give you the big, the big price movement. And this is just a very steady up movement so far. Yeah, so uh, that's the patterns that we're looking at. Um, next thing, I, and, and remember, this is one I discussed yesterday. This is breaking out of the Chapman Wave Inside Track. It's the first time. This is what you want to see in the natural gas chart that I was showing a little earlier on for CODA. That you want to see it start to break out a resistance level. And we had only gotten to an A in the natural gas, but underneath, a lot underneath the previous highs, this has gone above. And that's a, the MACD still hasn't turned positive in the weekly. It's close. So this is important. And the monthly chart, look at that. Okay. Uh, a couple of other questions came in. R R B L X R B L X. It got to peak D. Now I made a big deal for months about the 200 period moving average. You don't see it, I said. But when we start to get closer and closer, that becomes a magnet. That's what we spoke about yesterday when I was talking about magnets. Spent a lot of time on that. Well. The magnet of the 200 period moving average at 52 has been hit in Roblox. Roblox is uh, trading as a gaming platform, ROB, RBLX, trading at 4.20. 
first time it's got the majority of the in months. That's a big deal. I'll be back in a month. That was a big deal. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I'm right, back. I didn't realize how quickly time flies when it's just an hour show. Uh, leg D in Roblox, and I think that this 200 period moving average is going to be a magnet. I can see 55 to uh, 46 as a trading range for the next week. I think if it digests the gains, um, then... Um, had a question about could GE be uh, could be doing the same thing as Disney? Yes, I think GE is starting to become a very interesting stock, and that's the rotation I'm talking about. So GE at uh, 76 is starting to show better strength, and it's helping the weekly chart. And now I wanted to show you something. Yeah, it's happy help, helping the weekly chart. Sem uh, 78, 73 is key support level. Uh, we're looking at six. The question, a guardian of the den said uh, six is down 20%. So have a look at this. We're six flags entertainment call. I wanted it for a long time. We tried to get it. We tried to get it. Then we got it, and it just never worked. And then I said, you know, something's wrong. If six flags in the summer, which should be huge, isn't doing well, we're out of it. We don't even want to touch it. Well, look what happened. Yesterday, I spent time talking about the, the, cup, the arch formation that can turn into a cup formation, and you can go to a D. Well, this went to a peak D with a round number 26 yesterday. Today, it's uh, trading at 20.20, .20, down 5.61. How about that? Uh, all the things we discussed, Chapman Wave takes you to at least a D. That's where other things can happen. Wow, did other things happen? <clears throat> Watching the rectangle formation. 
watching this cup turn into the, the arch turn into a double cup and so it was like a, like an M pattern and then it went up so you've got to be careful so what I'm saying is that yes this market is 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 working out very well right now is for me it's getting a tad overbought in certain areas and I'm just going to make it as clear as I can I do anticipate some kind of a give back over the next day or two maybe going into next week but we've broken out in the weekly charts and tomorrow at four o'clock is going to be really important we'll talk about that tomorrow check out my opening call my daily newsletter and my my uh, webinar that I do is now archived and I especially did it so that you can listen to it any day, any week. It's not specific to, to yesterday's, it's the patterns. Have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for Steve Rhodes coming up.